Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and I have pursued, followed, striven for a zero waste lifestyle for the better part of a decade. I think we're going on seven years. What? <laughs> Eight? I don't know. Numbers. I've been doing this for a bloody long time and I have evolved immensely through the zero waste lifestyle. I was there with the mason jar, I was there with the plastic demonification, I was there doing the keep cup craze, but a lot has happened since then and I think as a lot of people within the zero waste lifestyle, the zero waste movement, you sort of evolve, you learn the bigger picture, you gain an overview, but when I started my zero waste lifestyle and continuously all up until today, I have heard the same misconceptions about what zero waste actually means. I thought I wanted to sit down with you guys and tell you some of the things that I often hear and just let us get some things straight. First of all, and this is an old song on my channel at this point, but we're just gonna go through it again. Zero waste doesn't mean that you're producing no waste at all. Because living perfectly 100% zero waste in a society not designed for it is impossible. And anyone that dares to try and convince you otherwise are lying probably also to themselves. Zero waste was never the practice, it's the goal, it's the way that we get there, it's the reduction, it's the being conscious with resources. And I came from the trash jar era, the era where everyone that was something in zero waste carried around a little jar symbolizing the amount of trash that they produce over the course of several years. And I, I, like, I can't speak for anyone else, but at least for me, there was always something that didn't fit in the jar. And I didn't do it for years and years and years. Like I never sat down and said, this is my trash from the last five years because that would have been a lie. But I know some people did. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't true. <laughs> Sue me. So this is something I haven't heard in a while, but then I started to see it again on my Instagram page because I started talking about reusables. And some people said that reusables seem gross to them or unhygienic. Using things multiple times rather than discarding of something seemed unhygienic because you kept the things around that was dirty even though you washed it, but how well did you really wash it? And that made me think about this clean focused almost puristic way of living. There's a movement. Mm. Some people seem to think that in order for something to be clean, it has to be sterile. Cleaning with bleach and making everything sterile is just actually not doing yourself or your immune system any favors. Also, reusables aren't disgusting. I, I don't know what people are going on about. Do you also ask for disposable cutlery in a restaurant? Or do you use the thing that hundreds, if not thousands of people before you have put in their mouths? Because it's clean. It was cleaned. Moving on, that really got me, that really got to me. I've also often heard that people assume zero waste is a very all or nothing kind of lifestyle. Either you're always focusing 100% on being zero waste or you're not zero waste. And I definitely have days where I am a better zero waster than other days. I definitely have days where I don't really care about my zero waste lifestyle. If I'm sick, I'm going to order takeout and snacks and it's all gonna come in plastic. Some days you're better at it than other days and that's completely normal. It's that way with most lifestyles. If you want to try out zero waste, if you want to try and learn something about it, it doesn't mean that you're committing. You're allowed to evolve in it and you're also allowed to nitpick what you want and what you don't want. I have heard so many people say that living zero waste is expensive and I completely understand where that misconception comes from because it comes from this green eco-friendly capitalism-esque hellscape where we have so many products reusables that you can buy you have millions of products that you can get you have thousands of different sellers and shops and brands selling you eco-friendly disposables eco-friendly swaps zero waste swaps sustainable products whatever and if you think you have to buy all of these things in order to be zero waste it's definitely going to be an expensive lifestyle it's definitely going to be expensive if you need fancy cotton totes if you need glass straws if you need this specific stainless steel lunchbox if you need these specific water bottles if you need these things if you think that you need those things. But that's not all zero waste is about. Zero waste, first of all, is about using the materials around you in the best, most sustainable way possible. It means looking at the materials we surround ourselves with in a different light, not assuming that something is just waste because it's designed to be single use. Like, how can we use things multiple times? How can we get the most out of our products? 
that's also zero waste. I think a lot of people refer to the prices in eco shops when they say that zero waste is more expensive because of bulk stores. Some bulk stores, the majority of bulk stores, are small independent shops, which means that they're going to be more expensive than a big grocery store because buying something in smaller quantities, as small independent shops have to do, is going to be more expensive. Furthermore, getting things of better quality that are more sustainable with the right certifications from local farmers or farmers that are also independent, all of this is going to be more expensive. So if you want to only shop in bulk stores, that is going to be more expensive than buying things in a regular grocery store. But I don't necessarily think it's because zero waste is more expensive. First of all, you don't have to shop at bulk stores. If you can't, if you can afford it, if you don't have one accessible to you, then that's one of the things that you're just not doing. That's okay. Zero waste is also about reducing consumption in general, which means that there are loads of stuff, loads of crap, that you're just not gonna use, that you're not gonna pay for, that you're not gonna buy, and that's gonna save you money. Like I started my zero waste lifestyle when I was still at uni and had a very limited budget. And what I realized when I sort of went all in and really tried to only buy sustainably and only consume sustainably is that my budget shifted. I used to spend a lot of money over here, now suddenly I didn't, and then I started spending money over here instead, where things cost a little bit more. Not everyone has the flexibility to make that switch, completely understand, but zero waste as many other eco-friendly lifestyles is about consuming less and consuming more consciously and cutting away all those things that you don't need. If you can only afford the cheapest type of pasta, get the cheapest type of pasta, because that's literally not what the lifestyle is about. It's fine, you're doing amazing. So this is interesting, zero waste is only for individuals or we're only looking at zero waste from the perspective of individual consumers. Zero waste is actually an industry term. It comes from production. It means not wasting any materials or any resources during the production of an item. But it was during 2012 or 2013, I reckon, that the zero waste term sort of dribbled down from industry and down into a movement that was mainly targeted towards consumers. Which means that companies and cities can absolutely adapt the zero waste principles. And currently I'm taking a certification that will make me able to talk to businesses as a zero waste third party certifying body. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, zero waste is not just for people, consumers and individuals. It's also for companies, cities and regions. Now I do see where this comes from as well. Zero waste being too time consuming is something I've heard many times and I think it's because a lot of people assume that it takes a long time to adjust your habits and it takes a long time to repair your clothes and it takes a long time to make food from scratch and while all of this is somewhat true, any kind of lifestyle change is time consuming, especially so in the beginning. If you're suddenly deciding that you want to get in shape and you're changing your lifestyle to exercise more, the exercise is going to be time consuming. So I think there's a truth to the fact that especially so in the beginning, zero waste is time consuming because you're changing a lot of your habits, that takes time. But the longer you do these things, the easier it is. I don't really think about these things as being time consuming anymore and I haven't for years. When I'm watching a movie or a TV show I often sit there stitching up my clothes if something is ripped instead of being on my phone. I listen to podcasts and the news whenever I'm cooking in my kitchen and it's one of my most treasured habits to go to the farmer's market on Saturdays within the calculation of how much time you're using on this. You're not just wasting the time, you're actually spending it investing in yourself and in your own quality of life. You can only be zero waste if you live in a big city. I know where this comes from because it primarily comes from the fact that then you have eco shops available to you, then you have bulk stores available to you typically. You typically see more zero waste sustainable options accessible to people living in bigger cities but it doesn't have to be that way. Again you can just be mindful with resources, throw less away, be mindful of packaging and also if you live in a smaller town or in a smaller city chances are you might be able to get more seasonal produce which means less packaging so I think there are some benefits from living in the city but I also think there are tons of benefits living outside the city. If you live on the countryside you might not have a bulk store nearby but you might have a yard that makes it easier to compost or grow your own vegetables so zero waste is only about the trash you put in your bin. This is not true. And I remember the first time I really realized that zero waste and sustainable living has to be about more than just waste. I have seen a lot of the bigger role models in zero waste talking about zero waste as though it's only about plastic. I have seen some of these bigger 
influencers, authors, speakers in the zero waste movement talk about the fact that you don't have to look at animal agriculture, the consumption of meat, you don't have to look at your flight emissions because you're focusing on trash specifically. And while I think it's completely okay to start by focusing on one thing, get that down before you move and do other things. It can be really overwhelming if you sit down and decide to lower your impact and then you try to lower everything at once. Like that's just not gonna work. But it's different to say as a spokesperson, as a role model, as someone people from the movement look towards that you don't have to look at these things ever. It doesn't make sense to not look at your consumption of meat and dairy if you want to lower your impact. Zero waste, at least to me and to many people in the movement, luckily, zero waste is now more than what ends up in your bin. It's about more than packaging and it's about more than plastic. It's about lowering your impact in many different sectors of your life. And packaging only accounts for less than 5% of the impact of a product on average. It's not the most important thing to look at. And this is something that really shocked me when I had been in the lifestyle for a while. I was demonizing plastic. I was avoiding plastic at all costs. I really, really tried. I had the worst anxiety about plastic, which was so detrimental and dumb. It came from the lifestyle and it came from the discourse about what zero waste is about. It's about the fact that if you have something in your bin you was unsuccessful at zero waste that day and that's just simply not true. I also see a lot of misconceptions about composting. Now it seems like a lot of places are getting industrial grade organic waste and composting facilities which is great but it's different from backyard composting. The processes are different when we recycle organic waste like kitchen scraps in an industrial grade composting facility. We apply temperature to the organic waste to make it go break down. But you can also compost at home and you don't need a yard or a garden to do that. I have been composting in my apartment for a while. I use a Bokashi composting system and I use the juice from my Bokashi compost to water all my plants. I also have two guides on my channel on how to get started on composting in an apartment so I'll link those down below if you want to check them out but you don't need a yard or a garden to get started on composting and I've saved the best for last. The most widely believed misconception about zero waste is that zero waste swaps are always more sustainable than the products that we're replacing and that is just not true. And we're sort of going back to the eco-friendly green-esque capitalism where many companies and brands have produced products that look the part, that look sustainable, that are reusable, but the thing they're replacing didn't have that big of an impact to begin with. At least not an impact that's big enough for a reusable product to replace it. Not one you wouldn't have to use 10 million times in order to make up for the impact. A lot of products aren't as sustainable as you think that they are, but it's a really solid way to make a lot of money really fast when consumers are generally increasingly so interested in lowering their impact and buying sustainable products. I have also made videos about this. One of the more recent ones has been about tooth tap now I think they're great but when you look at the studies the impact analysis that's done on toothpaste in contrast to tooth taps their overall environmental impact minimally different and you see this with some types of products obviously there are types of disposables that are really bad for the planet and reusables that are great for the planet and that replace them really quickly and that's great but it's just not always the case so I think it's very important that we as consumers are aware of the advertising strategies that's being used towards us, the marketing strategies. So just because something is zero waste doesn't necessarily mean that it's as good or as necessary a product to have. There are a million different zero waste products that are absolutely unnecessary, first of all. <laughs> Those misconceptions I've seen about zero waste and the movement throughout the years and also just recently. If you have heard anything where you just thought that cannot possibly be true, comment down below and let me know what you have heard about zero waste and let's debunk it together or confirm it, who knows. Thank you so much for watching, have an amazing day, take really good care of yourselves, until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!